Kacha. And I would like to start by asking, maybe anyone, when we talk of Kacha, what do we mean? Or what do you understand? I think it's a way of doing good. <laughs> what do you think? So he is right, you are also right. That culture is a way of doing things, like a pattern that is similar to a certain community. The way they do their things. Let's leave alone the deaf culture. We take on the, the, the four, the five in Kenya. We have cultures that we know. Like the Maasai culture, I think it's one of the cultures that has really remained evident. There are a way, there's a way you can look at a Maasai guy. And when you look at them like this, you don't need to be told this is a Maasai. Because of the way they are dressing, and uh, maybe carrying a, a rungu, they also carry a, a sword. I don't know if Kukuyu's have a culture. <laughs> Kukuyu's have a culture that is still uh, prominent. Which one? Maybe during the Dawa people. Oh, there are those issues like, like the Dawa. Uh, there's a way, if you want to marry from this family, there are those negotiations. And sometimes, our cultures are related to our tribe. You realize that the Kikuyu have their culture, and we also have, like the Kamba, they have their culture. Every tribe has their culture. And I want us to take on uh, some aspects of culture, and also related now to the deaf community. One of the things that we should recognize is that culture includes the issue of language. And language is usually within a tribe. So when we talk of the Kikuyu, the Kikuyu have their own culture, and part of their culture is their language, which is Kikuyu. I just want to give also the example of the Kamba. Kambas have their own culture, and part of the culture is the language that they use. When they speak, when, uh, when Musebi talks here, and she talks to Kamba, then chances are she is a Kamba. With the rest, when they talk Kikuyu, maybe when Francesca talks uh, Kikuyu or Kikamba, then we are left confused. In which culture is she? Is she a Kikuyu? Is she a, a Kamba? Because we ascribe our languages to our tribes. When we come to the deaf community, one, I want to put it across to you, that the deaf believe they are a tribe on their own. It's only that they have not been recognized, but when you look at the issues of culture and language, then they believe they qualify to be a tribe on its own. One, because they have got their own culture, two, they have their own language. And the language of the deaf is, is sign language. So they are using sign language as part of the, their culture. A tribe is defined by language and culture. The deaf have their own language, and now we are going to look at some cultures that they do have among themselves. Uh, when we talk of the hearing people, there is a tendency to live within our tribes. When you want to marry Moses, I don't know what percentage, but I think the, the, the higher percentage for you is that you may end up marrying a, a fellow Kikuyu. The same for blessing. The same for Joanna Mekata. She is, a, <laughs> she is among the few. She's uh, you, you, you want to go overseas for a for, um, Zoom. Not necessarily, just that. Uh, uh, not okay. 
most likely uh, we tend to marry within our clan and within our country. When we come to the deaf community, it is funny because they also would prefer marry from their own culture and their own tribe. Now their own tribe is yeah. the deaf community. Actually, when we are writing the, 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 the name deaf, when we are referring to them as a community, we don't use small d. We call them capital D deaf. And when we write anything, we use starting with a capital letter. It means that it's a, it's a proper, it's a proper noun, and so we have the capital D death. Now, whenever you see capital D death, that means we are talking of a community, not the disability. Actually, the deaf don't believe that they have a disability; they believe they are a minority group of people. So, whenever we are dealing with them, it's good to know that. We want to, as the hearing people, most of the times we want to pull them to our culture. We want them, commonly, if it is a Kikuyu, you want them to marry a fellow Kikuyu. If it is a Kamba, you want them to marry the fellow Kamba. But when we come now to the deaf community, they don't care whether their spouses are Kikuyu, Meru, Embu, Zungu, as long as they are speaking one language, which is sign language. But then we give them problems because we want them to do like we do, forgetting that we are in the same, we are not in the same culture. I don't know, Kama, you have seen that in, in our community. Like, if you, if uh, Lola, you told your parents you will be married. I want to be married with you. Do you think they would appreciate it immediately? Or they want first of all to interrogate you? They ask you, you know, they don't want to bring the tribal issue, but they have reservation. I have seen a, 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 an example out of class now. Of a young man, sorry, a young lady in Kikuyu here, Kiyavu. And this young man, sorry, this young lady, she has a boyfriend. And the boyfriend is a Luo. And then, uh, I don't know how you conduct yourself when you want to bring your boyfriend to your home. You tell your mom you have visitors, you don't, or a visitor, I have a visitor, who will be coming here on? Saturday. And so I would like you to be there. You wait for him or yeah, most of the time they say him. Your mom your mom minani. So to mabia ni kona lafiki, ni kona mugeni, na takuja na wageni wengine. So this uh, uh, lady tells the mother, ni kona mugeni, na takuja Saturday to wakia. Wakapikiwa, wageni wakakuja. Ukafika wakati wa introduction. Then the first guy says, I am Ogedi. The second one says, I'm Mochora. The third one says, uh, is an uh, Odinga. And then uh, they were four. When the last one also mentioned the name, it was still a Ruo name. And then suddenly the mother broke into tears. <gasps> It's the influence of our cultures, like you cannot marry in another tribe. And the deaf I can give an example of a deaf guy. I, I don't know if you have met him. And he's married, he's a Luo, and he's married to a Kikuyu girl or a wife. And they had issues because the mother of the husband said, You cannot marry a you. That Kikuyu is going to finish. All your money is wow. gone. <laughs> How can you go and do that? <laughs> and then uh, the, the, the lady, her parents, uh, they are also up in arms. How can you go to, to, to Luo? How comes you both want to know? 
they are both sick. But my our friends, their husband and wife, they are from one community, they speak the same language, they don't have an issue. This is your two issues and protagua care. I would like as you go up there, try to educate people, let them know that the deaf have also chosen to live like the way we do in our own communities. And if they bring in Amzungu, if they bring in whatever they want to bring in, they can do so because they have the same language. You, you can also be a, a person of interest, joy, in the deaf community. Because through sign language, you have become part of them. So you can also find yourself either marrying a deaf person or being married by a deaf person. They will do so because you are able to communicate. I want us to quickly look uh, at the aspects of deaf culture. Yani ziko kwa deaf culture, very briefly. One is use of sign language to communicate. The language of the deaf is sign language. There is no other language that the deaf use. For you to communicate with the deaf, use sign language, which can also be written. And I know you know how to do written sign language and also now the, the, the sign or the, the, the manual uh, sign language which we combine with the non-manual. Number two is use of sign names for ease of identification. The dev, instead of calling out names because they don't use their voice, so we cannot keep calling uh, Blesson or Lola they give sign names. And what is a sign name? They look at you and they see maybe a feature in you or about you and they assign you a sign that they will use to identify you. And they give sign names to any person in the deaf community or any other person of importance. Did you get that? Any person of importance has a sign name. Meaning you are also part of the important people. But you have a sign name because you are part of the deaf community. Do you have anyone who does not have a sign name? You all have, or oh, you don't have a sign name? <laughs> then uh, you should be baptized as soon <laughs> as, soon as uh, today or tomorrow. It's important for you to have a sign name. So, I am Paul. That's my sign name. Whenever you go to interpret, and it's part of the deaf community, you need to introduce yourself. You, you give your name, the fingers spell your name, and then you finger spell the other, sorry, you finger spell the name, and then you give the sign name. If you don't have a sign name, be sure they will ask you sign name, who or what. Then if you don't have a sign name, they are going to assign you the uh, an, uh, assigned name. So you need to always identify yourself as an interpreter using your, your assigned name. It's funny, the deaf may know them um, uh, each other through sign names. Nahawajuan is the real name. I have seen that we have gone for a meeting and it registered. And then when we are calling out names, somebody is reading and finger spelling, then uh, we don't know who that is. Nobody knows who Paul Masharia is. But the moment they do, oh, that's Paul. We know, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have those sign names. When you, you, they want, number three, when they want to call or get attention of another person, what do they do? You wave your heart. And I think you may call common narcissism. So and I can talk to her, you see me doing it. You wave your heart until you get the attention of that person. So if I want to talk to Francesca, I would do like this. I will wave my heart until Francesca sees that I need her attention. Kama Akobisi Hajani Ona cannot be able to get my attention. Then I can talk to you. And then when you get my attention, you call her for me. Then that's when somebody is far away from you. 
there is a general rule that you should never throw an object to a deaf person to get their attention. So I will cover it in a homeyoni, then you could put a cadaz in my home, then you could share. I'm a little canawe, you could share. So if I need your attention, I wave my hand. If you see me well and good, if you don't see me, then somebody next to you should be able to get the attention you want. If nobody gets uh, there to, uh, and you don't get my attention, and you maybe you are walking, and I remember something, and I want to speak to you I do like this, you are not seeing me, and you go away, then what should I do? I should not throw any object to you. I just let you go, we meet next time. And that's what I agree that. Ukiona mtu umefanya hivi haja ona kusipanya kama jeans wetu nafanya anga. Sikika you are victim. Mesanamia mtu hello haja ona. Then you feel embarrassed you unajikuna kiko. You wonder kama kuna mtu ameona na ame embarrassment. Now us in the deaf community we are not bothered by that. If I did like this and you nobody saw then that is part of our it's part of us, part of our life. Come and watch our industry at Prama next time. So we need to overcome. Ah, to get to the last year, we have to just come here and perform our religion. Haja, Prama. Come and move to. Ah, to carry you now. Wherever, if somebody is near you and you want to get their attention, then you tap their arm. Why is your arm? Part of you is the arm. <laughs> this is your arm. So you tap any part of the arm. You can tap here, like Mwari was saying, you can tap here. You can tap either part of the arm. This is a general rule. You don't tap any other part of the body. You just tap the arm. Then there is a difference between tapping and slapping <laughs> or hitting. So I don't want to get your attention and I'm like, ah, no. So if I want to get your attention, you tap. And then I will be able to respond to you. Number four, use of good lighting for communication. You cannot communicate with a deaf person using some language when there is no light. So what happens if we were in a room, it's night, and suddenly the light goes off and I was talking. What happens? Sorry? The communication is lost. The communication is lost. And so I should not continue talking. Because the deaf use their eyes to listen. And where there is no sufficient light and they may not be able to see. So what, if they are not able to see me silently, then uh, communication has to stop until there is provision. Nowadays, it's very easy because we have our phones and we can use our phone to like maybe a room or uh, whatever we could be. Then how do we use our phones to light up a room like this one? One, we can put on our phone lights on and then we place them on a table like this one and they face up. When they face up, there is what we call peripheral light in a, in a candle and should be enough to illuminate the face of the person who is signing and you'll be able to see what is there. One rule, you don't direct the light of the torch on the face of the person who is signing. What happens if I, uh, I have my torch, then all the light is on your eyes. What an only can moon and you you actually blinden them, they are not able to find or to see you. Then the next thing is uh, sitting arrangement should be as the following. One, it should be either loud table, what we call loud table. Now, loud table means that we sit in a circular way. Like we are sitting in a circle. Nobody is blocking each other. That's one way. The other way is like the way I am talking today. 
and you are there at the level one, then our way of sitting should be semi circular. The way we are sitting right now is legal and not <laughs> and not allowed. We should sit in a semi circular way and then meet the facilitator. I should be here at the central point. And why do we say that? It is the issue of visibility. You said the depth of this is in their eyes. We need you to be able to see everyone in the meeting. So that when Lola is talking, you don't need to move from where you are to see what she is saying. So we should sit in a semicircular way or circular way. If it is not that way, the that way is what we call staircase way. Staircase, I hope you have gone to some halls where the people at the last floor, they are high up there. And then the people who are at the front pews, Wakotini, and Imepangwa, come stairs. So we can use that so that nobody is being blocked. And then the person who is speaking or talking, Amanda Pare, there. The next one uh, uh, is uh, opening doors without necessarily knocking. A dead person would get to your room without necessarily knocking. Nowadays, I've seen they have came. They, especially if they know the person who is inside is here, they will knock your door because they know you are here. But if they know the person who is inside the house or inside the room is deaf, they will not knock. They will just allow you to get in. But then you also need to be courteous. You don't say because I'm going to visit Moses and Moses is deaf. Then I go and I push his door open and I get into his house. How do you get into his house? The first thing you do, just knock the usual way. Then open the door. Push the door slightly. And wait. If there is somebody who is inside there, chances are they will come to the door. If nobody comes, now push the door further and maybe you also get in. But don't just get into other people's houses without knocking the door. If there are some people who have door there, no, or gate there. Can that be used in a dead person's house? So there's a modification which has come. Instead of doing the bell, they do a valve. Like where you are seated here, there is a valve here, but the switch is outside there. So when I get here and I want to get your attention, I want you to know I'm there at the gate. I just press the, the, the button and the valve will go on and you know there is somebody talking to them. Otherwise, Kitambo, it used to be very bad and I also want to pose this challenge to you. Suppose you are, you are deaf, raised, and you are married to a deaf lady. And then a mapito mapito ya waze uchelewe kufika nyumbani, kufika saa nene kufika na waifu wa melala wa mwede. You are right. There is no other option. Utalala. Utalala India. But then they came with, a, with a, another way, another method, where when I want to, uh, to get your attention, I'll go to bed and then uh, I tie a piece of string in my hand and uh, then I throw it outside. I don't know how many of you have to report to report my extra from war. Many of you have to report to my extra from war. Suppose Mahari will come naeka from Luo, and from Gine and Jue, Mahari will come from Luo. Atakuja na from Luo, Akure Chakura Yako, Wewe kutoka Shure, Matuka Hakuna, Chakura. So, what they used to do, you tie yourself with a, with a, with a piece of string, I have to now agree, it's delicious, it's a cool name, I always got on it. Wewe kikuja, you shake the, 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 the string. Then, we can shake, but then, uh, before I open the door, I should also check who shake the, who has the key. So I'm going to end up with the key, 
kumbe wewe ulikuwa unafikia ni replacing na kumbe ni ni ndongo na mafungulia na huwezi scream you know you are deaf person you are deaf lady you cannot scream na you thought this ndongo sorry is your is ndongo is person who has come so what do you do and you can't scream and to make matters worse it's not even blessing is somebody you have never seen na mejifunika and it has happened so it we, we usually they take a lot of caution it's true somebody has woken me up but can you still start there and i identify you so that i can allow you to get into the room so ukikuja usiku na wewe ni deaf umetigizwa hakuna kufunguliwa kwa emergency at least ikora 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 you have to they are the bad and they are converging uh, it's very risky the same case is when you are a young mother and you are deaf and you have a baby then the baby wakes up at night how do you know mtoto mtoto analia so there's a general rule that if you have a baby and you are deaf then you sleep or you stay with the baby until they are able to sleep on the young oh so the, nani you want to buy tomorrow a deaf girl with this one you need to be aware that you stay with the baby in your bed or uhame uachie tanda mpaka wakati huu mtoto ataweza kuzalisha baba yake otherwise anafaa alale na mama kila wakati why hakuna mtoto mwenye nalianga
wana behave kama venye wanafanya one they have a tendency of pulling tables and chairs dragging them and making a lot of noise and i remember there was a time we were head to see a church now after the service for deaf the deaf were using a class and after the service they want to rearrange the class they call a classroom and there are lockers and there are chairs and in the next classes there are service for the classes which were going and meeting and then all of a sudden everything was like <laughs> all over and one the caretaker came opened the door and was very angry then nani anasikiza <laughs> so nobody was listening to him we we were just pulling the chairs wakati nilisikia wewe mimi nimesikia na nimeangalia na ameniangalia nikaona mimi niko unique kwa hiyo hata mimi nikashika yangu nikavuruka unajua ni anaweza kazika nikaonge then i know there is a way you get a phone you can switch off the light and switch them on so i just switch them light them on and then they were so there is a, a tendency of pulling tables and chairs and even nyota do you know nyota what are the yasona let's hear the official thing it can bother you do you know it can some children can be doing that in the church and nobody is is bothered because they can they are not here there could also be an issue of banging door like i'm fungua mlango and then uh, when they go out is like there is boom mlango umeongezwa ama ameingia akifunga mlango ameongezwa do you think that's intentional the problem is uh, most of them don't know they are not aware that that door has produced a loud bang cc you to not hear the hearing people and most of the times we think they are bitter we think they are angry so you keep wondering ni nini nimemfanyia ametoka na akaorganisha mlango so ukiona deaf ametoka na ameorganisha mlango the problem is not with the deaf person the problem is with you because you can hear the bang yeye ni kutoka tu ame ametoka but nimeona wasikuizi wenye especially wenye wamesoma wanajua hiyo maneno na wanasikiza kaa hizi vitu na kitu na kufundisha hivi na mwalimu anainterpret kwa hivyo wanazielewa so unakuta tena akitoka anataka kufunga mlango kwa upole sababu hataki kuongesha na jua na ongeseane tena unakuta amekuwa extra careful tena sasa kwa sababu hajui mlango inafungika angia wapi tena anafunga softly softly kwa sababu hataki tena ifanye hajui ku balance exactly where so we need to understand some of those dynamics the hearing people usually think the deaf are angry and bitter and sometimes they could be because of us not understanding them but most of the times they do nan manuals like i mtumanye hatu is a language atafikiriaje huyo mtu ila naumia naumwa ama amekasirika na mso na toa so then mama yake anashito kuna kitu anaumwa na hapa na wakati anaumwa anafanya anga hivi na anafaa atreko mama the other one is this starting could be noise do you know you start your tea in a smooth manner because you can hear so kama aski anaweza kuongesha kijiko masikia kama ni kengele <laughs> and i remember there is a time and i and i think it is funny tumeenda kwa hoteli and we are deeply our five of us and then we are saying we are just talking and saying the waiter something does not tell them one of us could be here so anakuja na kitabu kuandika zile vitu tuna hitaji so wakiandika hapa mimi nina ninaandika ninaandika nalata wa chai na magazi kuweka sukari meza yetu all of a sudden i realize watu wengine wanatuangalia sikiwa 
Because uh, you have come to school to learn 